Okay, good evening. It is Monday, June 6th at 5.58 p.m. Well, might as well get the, the meeting underway here. I can come. Uh, roll call. Renee O'Donnell, Brian Carlisle, Lucille, Cindy DeBeck, and Cindy Grant, all present and accounted for. Public comment. Gary, do you want to comment about that? Well, no, because Cindy just explained. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. The, Gary, I just, Katie, uh, just so you know, we had a brief discussion about the um, the uh, SAD 22 school budget. It showed who got increases and who didn't. We got the biggest increase down in Newburgh, so that's all it was. So. Um, probably not even a need to put that in the in the minutes. So let's do the warrants. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, oh. I, I wanted to see if I could do some public comment. If that was oh, okay. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, my name is Sean McBrady. I'm from Hamden. Uh, oh. I'm not a resident of Newburgh, but this ties into RSC 22 and some of the advocacy work that I've been doing. Um, I'm an educational advocate. I'm a journalist. And to some degree, I've become a media personality, although that's a whole other story. So I hope to take only seven to eight minutes of your time, but I think this is really important. If that's I apologize. Okay. I thought you were John Zimmerman. <laughs> Jim, Jim Sean, Zimmerman. Sean I, I apologize. No, I didn't, okay. I didn't know who uh, you were. No, so. no, and that's, and, and uh, so uh, first off, I just want to point out on this date, 1944 was D-Day. Um, 4,000 Americans lost their lives protecting the country. Um, I know the Memorial Day parade in Hamden was pretty underwhelming, but that's a whole other thing. So. So I've been somebody who stood up for educational rights of students, parents, and taxpayers, and now teachers, um, in many cases where other people don't feel like they have a voice, and they're concerned because of cancel culture to speak up. So one of the questions that I've been asking everybody, and I didn't know this until a couple years ago, was what is the percentage of your property taxes in Newburgh going to RSU 22? The percent of our, percent of our property taxes, yes. percent of our overall budget is about uh, I, don't have my budget I have the number just to say yeah, I have the number exactly <laughs> okay. if you want, but it's seventy two point three five percent. Yes. So when you think about that, it's really upside down. Um, you know, you're getting twenty seven percent or so of your property taxes for municipal services. Meanwhile, seventy two percent are going to a school, which frankly, I'll, I'll talk to it is failing in education of the, of the students. Um, and just for the record, I'm not anti LGBTQ. I'm not anti anything. I'm probably anti-Biden, I guess, by this t-shirt, but um, what's going on in these schools is the LGBTQ push is constant and in your face. This is now Pride Month, I don't know if you all are aware of that, mm -hmm. but they're pushing this hypersexuality of minors constantly. And if you don't uh, appreciate that, then you're a homophobe, which isn't true, but that's sort of the process. So I firmly believe in content of character uh, over anything. It doesn't matter what you look like or where you're from. But after it was announced that Kelsey Stoyanova was the main teacher of the year, she is a Reedsbrook Middle School teacher in RSU 22, part of that announcement provided a book list that she essentially plagiarized off the internet. This book list had anti-father, transgender, LGBTQ, critical race theory, and essentially hardcore kiddie porn books in this list. And it wasn't very hard to figure out. This was a completely divisive process, and that's what we're seeing in these RSC 22 schools and across the nation. Principal Susan Thibodeau of Reedsbrook pushed these, this book list through announcements, daily announcements, prizes, and incentives to students, to minors, to kids that were 11 years old. And uh, this got national exposure on Laura Ingraham's show when I spoke about Kelsey's list. Now, social emotional learning is kind of a new buzz term that's going on. That's being pushed by the main Department of Education. It's essentially a gateway drug to critical race theory and hypersexualization and critical pedagogy. And all those terms might be fairly new to you, but basically what it is is it's a leftist narrative on teaching. And that's what's happening. So critical race theory is really pushing skin color over content of character. Hypersexualization is talking to any kid in high school or middle school or now kindergarten, as we found about sexuality outside of the state-mandated ninth grade sex education. And many parents and townspeople don't know that this is happening within those brick walls. And it's divisive. Um, and when people find out about it, not only do they not want it to happen, it's kind of like a fight or flight or freeze scenario because when I say there's kiddie porn in the library of those schools, people don't know how to process that because it's not a natural thing. It's not something that you folks would probably ever think happens, but it is happening. So 
the social emotional learning aspect, um, teachers are talking about safe spaces and anti-bullying practices and all these things, and I'll, I'll kind of provide you a testimony from a school teacher who thinks differently than that. But I didn't know if you're aware that 62% of Hamden Academy students are below or well below the state guidelines in math. Two thirds of the kids graduating from Hamden Academy don't know math. Yet every single year, and you just kind of alluded to it, we pay more and more and more in property taxes. I do that from Hamden, where it's 53%, and here again it's 72%. So um, I don't know, you know, in the hallways of Hamden Academy, for example, furries roam the hallways. I don't know if you know what a furry is. A furry is a, a student who dresses up like a cat or a dog or a fox or a cow. And in roll, roll call in the school, they will meow back to the teacher, and if the teacher doesn't meow back, the teacher gets hauled into the principal's office. Mm -hmm. You can't wear a hoodie in Hamden Academy. You can't wear a hooded sweatshirt, but you can wear ears and tails. Um, it's that bad of what's going on here. So, also, I didn't know if you know, if you wanted to identify as a, a man <clears throat> in high school, you can use the female locker room, shower, and bathrooms as long as you identify as a female. Um, that's what led to many sexual assaults down in Loudoun County, Virginia, and I think could happen here in Maine. So it's happening in Hamden. That's the policy. It's a transgender policy. I'm not anti-transgender. I just don't believe that putting 99% of the students at risk for 1% of the students is a good idea. So kids can't spell, but they can pick their pronouns. They were told by the Department of Education in kindergarten that doctors make mistakes when choosing the gender of babies when they're born. Um, they also decided that uh, Pride Day was as important a holiday as the 4th of July. So these are all videos that I outed uh, several weeks ago, and uh, recently some of the main department, uh, some of the uh, GOP has also pushed uh, out as well. So again, <clears throat> this is a, a really, it, it's the dumbfication of me, basically. That's what's happening with what we're paying for taxes, what you're paying for taxes here. The main reason I'm here is not only to inform you as to what's going on in RSU 22, but to formally denounce the role of Heath Miller, who is the school board chair, and from Newburgh seeking re-election. In my opinion, his lack of leadership in dealing with these issues that he's known about now for eight months is borderline criminal. He's done nothing, not one thing, to address this uh, uh, information. He took an oath to protect the Constitution under God, and I don't believe he's fulfilled that. So. Um, because of his lack of direction, students don't feel like they're being heard. They don't feel like they're safe in these schools. And I have a quote here from a RSU 22 student who was 11 years old. And this is a quote. My experience at school this year has been awful for many reasons. I've been made to feel extremely pressured about all the LGBTQ things being pushed at my school. I don't see myself as a straight conservative student represented at all in the civil rights team display they put on in December. That was a push actually from the Maine Attorney General's office, if you can believe it. Signs around my school tell me I don't have to use my assigned gender when I can make my own up, pressuring kids that are 11 to label themselves. I've been harassed and verbally attacked this year for not putting a label on myself. Kids should not be pressured to figure out and label themselves or their sexual orientation until they're older and have had a chance to grow up. I'm scared and anxious all the time about what's going to happen next with a constant push of sexual orientation. I feel like I have depression and lots of anxiety because of what's happening at school. That's an 11-year-old kid in what should be some of the best times of their life. <clears throat> Another brave student uh, wrote me testimony. There's zero discipline going on in these schools, and kids are getting away with anything they want. It's a free-for-all, basically. A regular straight, white, or black child doesn't feel important because the only thing they push is LGBTQ. The gist of what I get is the school is somewhat a joke right now. So bullying is also a major issue that's going on in these schools. And I'm almost done, and I appreciate your time. So we're now seeing the highest levels of anxiety, depression, and thoughts of suicide in kids uh, that we've ever seen because of COVID political theater. They're now two years behind on their education, and all these schools are pushing is LGBTQ. So a local teacher wrote me testimony, and this is a quote. As an employee of RSU 22, I've seen the progression over the years to include younger and younger children in the concepts of LGBTQ+, gender identity, gender fluidity, and sexual language. Initially, I thought it was to prevent bullying, but as time wore on, it was clear that wasn't the intent at all. The discussions and signs all over the school aimed at young children really alerted me to the grooming of children. Yes, grooming. That's what sexual predators do to children, exposing them to sexual content, language, and visuals 
repeatedly to take advantage of them for their own perversion. It's not okay, it's sexual abuse. There are other teachers that agree with me, however, we cannot speak up. The climate in RSC 22 is if you don't agree with the sexual grooming, you will be a target, and that they are afraid to lose their jobs if they speak up. I've had students confused and concerned, thinking that he might one day wake up as a girl. The hypersexualization of children is damaging to them. I'm so disgusted with the teachers' administration, including the school board, for so adamantly shutting down any opposition and discussion. So I started this process out very politely behind the scenes in September, sitting down with Heath Miller and the administration of RSU 22, pointing out some concerns that parents had brought to me. Um, I've challenged books. I've got the uh, book list challenge here that I'd like to submit uh, into the record. Um, and I think you'll be horrified by what you see for language on these books. Um, again, uh, Heath Miller kicked me off campus until December because I played a recording of him uh, in which I used the words anal sex to describe some of these books that are on this list. And essentially, Heath Miller uh, said, pornography is okay as long as it's in the context of a book. And I can play that clip for you if you wish, but that's his words. Okay, so you know Heath Miller saying graphic pornography is okay as long as it's in the context of a book. This is the guy that is trying to lead RSU 22 and the students, including those of Newburg and your taxpayers, uh, in these schools. I've literally pulled the books out of the stack in the library myself. So um, Tuesday, I think Newburg has an opportunity to send somebody new, somebody that does have leadership skills who can critically think and can very quickly determine good versus evil, because that's really the battle that's going on in these schools right now. Um, and I think, I'm hoping that more of Newburgh becomes more educated as to the issues. Um, I'm not saying Newburgh is insulated, but I'm not sure how much of this story you folks have known. I have copied Newburgh, um, I forget the, the town council link or the selectman link on some emails, but I've never had a response. Um, and so, you know, I tell all the parents across Maine that I speak to, and I speak to thousands of parents, to pull your kids immediately out of these schools because it's that bad. Or make a plan this summer to pull them out come fall because that's the only chance that these kids have at a real education. So that's a lot. It's probably overwhelming. Um, but I wanted to come here tonight and offer you the opportunity to ask me any questions if you have any. <clears throat> but at the very least, to put this information in the public record so that at least you have an idea of what's going on in these schools because they don't want this information out. The reason he banned me from campus, again, was not because I uttered the words anal sex in a recording. It's because I'm constantly exposing the issues that are happening in these schools and they hate it. Do you have a parent group behind you? Yeah, there's a number of uh, parents behind the scenes. Um, we've got, uh, you know, instant message and Facebook and those kind of things. Um, but parent, more parents are coming out of the woodwork, woodwork across the state. They're gaining confidence. But a lot of people are afraid because the cancel culture is venomous. Mm -hmm. I received threats against my wife. Um, a lawyer in Hamden, who I will not name, <clears throat> sent me a message that said he was going to come rape my wife because of what I was disclosing at the school. My girls have been attacked, I've been attacked, my wife has been attacked. <clears throat> now, I'm sort of callous because over the last two years I've been kind of beaten up through this process, so I fire back with a lot of ridicule, um, and it drives them even more crazy. But the base of it is truth and diligence and detail and photo requests and, and a lot of information that anybody can see for themselves. Um, and my frustration, I guess, to some degree is, as we near next Tuesday in the voting, it's not only that much more important to pick the right person, but realize that the RAC 22 system is spiraling down the toilet right now, in my opinion. Well, as a, as a board, we don't necessarily endorse any candidate. We just let the voting process take its... Right. And, I, and I realize you don't really have uh, any authority over RAC 22. You have influence. You pay the bills. Um, and I think that's the critical component for me is, I just want you to understand what you're paying for. You're paying for 62% of Hamden Academy uh, students who don't know math. Yeah. And it's insane. I mean, the baseline is 50%. They're not even trying to get to 100%. It's, it's crazy. So, uh, yeah, any, any questions that you have, I certainly would be 
I don't have any questions at this time. I do. Um, it, are you finding that it's the, the uh, teachers' union that's behind this? Or so the main department of education, the teachers' union, the principals' association, there's about 12 different of these, I'll call them woke nonprofits, that are pushing, for example, intellectual freedom. That's their new campaign. We had a number of parents across the state challenging books. You have to go through a formal process to actually put it on a form. They can't, they can't figure out for themselves that when it says, and I'm not going I won't read this to you, you can read it yourself, mm -hmm. it's horrific, vulgar language in these books. It takes four months to get through this process. But to answer your question, the Maine Teachers Union is the most powerful union in Maine. They are also nearly all registered Democrats. Now, people tell me, hey, parties shouldn't have any affiliation in this fight. It has 100% to do with it. I'm a conservative Republican. I'm very freely you know, open with that. I've been called a right-wing extremist. I'm not a right-wing extremist. I'm just like a basic conservative Christian man who is saying, hey, uh, I shouldn't be paying for pornography in the schools. But the Department of Education is pushing this stuff at kindergartners. Like I said, they, they are basically trying to put Pride Day on the same level as the 4th of July. You can celebrate it if you want. But when our tax dollars are starting to pay yeah. for the influence of kids, you're going to see in the next decade, unfortunately, the highest level of teen and 20-year-old suicide that the state has ever seen because of what's happening in schools. But the union is a majority. Yeah. Unfortunately, the fed federal government now is pushing it because they just recently they're tying uh, lunch money now into following yes. this. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and that's part of the gender ideology. It's, it's divisive, you know? I mean, like, critical race theory is bad enough if you're trying to pit a white versus black student and talk about oppressing oppressors or oppressing, you know, that kind of thing. And sexuality should be something behind the scenes. It should, should not be discussed with kids, with minors, in any point except for those points in, I think, fifth grade and ninth grade where they start to dabble in some of the biology and then ninth grade sex, sex education. But any, any parent, or sorry, any teacher who is talking sex to kids like Herman is, they have a gay sexuality alliance with a paid faculty member. So you can either send your kid to softball, basketball, chorus, band, or talk sex after school. Paid for by the taxpayers of Herman. It's just, the more, like, this is the tip of the iceberg. Like, we haven't even gotten, we've got the top 10% of the iceberg. The other 90% is under the water. And sometimes, like I said, when I, when I talk about things, people are like, well, I don't believe it. And I'll be like, well, here it is. It's on page 263, and here's the verbiage, and here's the book. Yeah, then they don't want to believe it. <laughs> like, they don't want to believe that these schools are doing it, so. Right, right. Did you have anything? Well, um, I heard you speak at the uh, caucus. Mm. And yep. I did, um, uh, Cindy asked me to do um, a, a news thing uh, what happened. Is this from the, the Newburgh GOP side or? Yes. Okay, yep, sure. Because uh, I was a delegate. Cool. I was three. Yep, yep. And we went down and the platform changes uh, were spot on. Yeah, right. mine was the third one. It's basically a code of ethics for teachers and outlawing critical race theory and hypersexualization of minors. And it was 1,800 delegates unanimously approved it. Yeah. Do you and, think? Do you think that will go to the teachers' union or the state or? Well, really, it's not a law. So it's uh, the platform, the plank of the GOP is is just like the Democrats have theirs. It's kind of what you stand for in the GOP. You don't necessarily have to agree on everything. Like what I say is, we might not ever be on the same page, but hopefully we're in the same book in the same library. Just hopefully not one of these books. But the the gist of it is, is um, we saw a gap and uh, and said this is important to us. And now it's trying to again educate even some of the GOP members who are not willing to get into this fight because they're afraid of the press. They're afraid of cancel culture. Like this this is such a prevalent. It, the bullying is real. Like I was called. Uh, <clears throat> I think I was called a. a, a I've been called bully, I've been called, uh, people said I've stalked teachers, all this is complete nonsense. It's, it's the information that they're f really afraid of. But yeah, 1,800 delegates up in Augusta said, that's exactly what we need. And I think it's, you know, again, not to soapbox too much, but Maine has an opportunity to make some major changes in November, but it also changes locally next Tuesday, if that makes sense. And the, we had the uh, meet the candidates night, mm -hmm. 
and I, I attended that. Keith Miller didn't attend, correct? No, he had a budget meeting. Okay. Not for him. To, he was. Yeah. But, hmm? I just said I read that same thing. He yeah. was not there, Good. but he was a, at a budget uh, yeah. hearing. Or so okay. he, he had a, a legitimate reason to not be there. But uh, people, uh, a drug problem in at Hamden Academy. Yeah, drugs, bullying, fights. It. I mean, it's. You're it, not allowed to tell the parents that the kid. Right. was taking drugs, yeah. and they're not allowed to have the police get involved. Well, I mean, there, there's, there's, as a parent, I would advocate to everybody, if, if your son or daughter's in an altercation in RSU 22, file a police report, because the schools will not deal with it. No. They don't want that information out, no. because it makes them look bad. And, and since June, uh, I think since June of last year, over 200 to 250 kids have been, they've been pulled out of RSU 22. The, the entire population of RSC 22 is, is declining. <clears throat> and what they continue to do is bus students in from all over the place to keep their numbers up, which actually costs you more tax dollars. You ought to find out about that. That'd be a question you might want to ask the superintendent. But the issue is, I think also you're going to see this summer uh, a huge gamut of teachers resign in the state of Maine because <clears throat> older teachers who have integrity or character don't want to be pushing this crap anymore. It's garbage, right? And they're like, I, I only need to survive two more years till I retire. And they're like, screw it, I'm a, I can't do this anymore. Meanwhile, some of the younger teachers are indoctrinated themselves because they went to a liberal college or they got indoctrinated in high school just like these kids in Hamden are. Um, it's, you know, it's brutal. And, and like I said, I realize you don't have authority, but you have influence. <clears throat> and I would just advocate to start asking questions as to what you're paying for because you're paying for pathetic results. Did, year they, year. did they publish the curriculum? No. <laughs> it's it, there's lack the lack of transparency is part of their deal. You know they're not even following the Freedom of Access Act law. They're not. Um, uh, they're not keeping watch on what's going on with the students. They turn a blind eye. Uh, yeah. um, when. When kids don't want to eat in the lunchroom because of things that are going on, and they go hide in the bathroom to eat their lunch, and then a uh, couple students, male and female, come in and they're vaping. Right. Or the, or doing other things. Or other things. Yes. Uh, but in the in the bathroom, they turn a blind eye to all of that. Yeah. The the the. Uh the disciplinary or the lack of discipline in these schools, again, is overwhelming because it created these these protected classes. Like they say, hey, look, if you want to identify as a giraffe in class and not do your homework, well, you know, we're not going to tell you to get in your seat because we're afraid you're going to sue us because you're a giraffe. I mean, that's how ridiculous this thing is. So I, I took up more time than I had asked for. I really appreciate it. Um, okay. You I can want, leave that with us. Yeah, yeah. I did want to submit this and. Uh, Whoever, yep. whoever wants it. Thank you very uh, much. But I would, I would advocate to, uh, to read through that and understand that Heath Miller, again, has done nothing <clears throat> to take care of these books. They've basically squashed it. He's kicked me off campus, so I can't come to the school board meeting and speak out against what's going on. And uh, again, in my opinion, um, unfortunately, he's just he's not, he's not a leader. He's not the man for the job. Um, okay. Hey, can I ask you a quick question? Do they allow uh, the Bible or the Quran or anything like that in the school? Well, it, I think they have these. Uh, I think there are rooms where you can read from your Bible, but it's not part of the curriculum. Not part so, of the library. Like if you had it, you could bring it in. So you can't go is, to the library and get a Bible. I don't believe so. Isn't what they're doing teaching a religion? Isn't there supposed to be a separation between? <laughs> yeah, it's a cult-like religion. Just, no just curious. Yeah, you know? that's that's what's going on. It's a cult. Uh, and unfortunately, like I said, not all teachers are bad. I've, I've got friends and family that are teachers, and they work hard, but they're fighting uphill because the Department of Education and the MEA, the teachers union, are pushing this woke nonsense because they are arms for the Democrat National Committee, which sounds black helicopter theory, but it's true. Yeah. Yeah. So. so most teachers are just sick over No, no. No, wow. and like I said, I, you know, this teacher that gave me this testimony from RSU 22 that will remain unnamed, I, I don't know who it is. I got it from a friend of a friend. That's how upset they are. They can't. They don't even feel like they're able to speak up because they're afraid they will lose their job if they don't go along with the plan. Right. Mm -hmm. So.
Anyway, I appreciate your time. Thank you Thank very you. much. All right. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, that was public comment. Okay. Right. Let's do the warrants and then we can move right on. All right. We, we haven't done the one yet, sir. Do you have public comment? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm under. No, wonder. this is Jim's Zimmerman. Okay, this is Jim. Job. Okay. All right, Jim, I'll go through this. We'll get, in the hall. We'll, <laughs> go, we'll get right to you. So, uh, warrants. PY warrant number 72 for $11,221.62. AP warrant number 73 for $141,979.11. AP warrant number 74 for $3,511. 35 cents. AP warrant number 75 for $12,179.95. AP warrant number 76 for $7,720. PY warrant number 77 for $4,999.05. I make a motion that we accept the warrants as read. Second. Second. All in favor? 3 0. Okay. Uh, abatements none. Minutes, none. Yeah, we're a little behind with the financials and minutes and stuff. Katie and I are trying to get caught up. Today. You'll get caught up. So, agenda adjustments. You're okay. Jim Zimmerman. Correct. Right. So, you're with the I agency. I agree here. Okay, well, uh, I'll just to, he's they're not together, right? No. Okay. How are you guys so doing? He's, he's got another thing. So, um, yeah, he's. So, Iker, you you've got people waiting for you? They're going to come in in a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Jim, do you mind if I just go with yeah, that? Yeah, okay. sure. Um, you, uh, you asked us about keeping a filing cabinet here. Is that what we're discussing? Well, you wanted to talk to him about continuing right. his, his rent as is. Right. Or, and I did speak to him about possibly... Um, Doing once, like once a month, starting out. Um, open gym. Open gym. Open gym. Okay, so once a month, open gym. Um, do you have any thoughts you would like to say about this? <laughs> I I have a couple of things I'd like to point out. I don't really feel like um, this is nothing personal. I'm just thinking of the liability of the town, the this, that. I don't really feel like we should have an outside entity with a desk and filing cabinet here, unless they're renting a room. Uh, you, you know what I mean? I, know, I mean, what you use basketball training yeah. and everything, that's fine. I just, um, I don't know how you feel about it. Mm. I'm, a little, yeah, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little, I don't know what I am about mm. it. I just, but what about like a cubicle and a locking file cabinet? It, we had just discussed because he keeps his equipment in here in the corner. Okay. Yeah. And um, that's kind of what that was um, for him to have a spot to sit down and do his records or whatever. Right. right. Um, as far as it's files, not that store all the time. Like, huh? It's not that store all the time. Yeah. I can't figure it out. Yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't mind keeping your equipment in here. You sit down, the parents yeah. sign everything. Do you, but I just want. Do you have like liability waivers and stuff like that going yes. on? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But you do. I okay. have them. Yeah. And okay. he has insurance. Um, I we have just reformatted the the same application that the school had. Here. Okay. And just made it the towns. Okay. Um. And I will have him make one of those out and get me a current insurance. Okay. Um. I thought it was going to be. One so what happens if there's a conflict with, uh, say, a resident wants the use of the gym on a particular day that conflicts with what he has going? How was that him? We haven't run into it, so. Um, well, we've not had possession really right. that long, so. Right. Right. But I mean, could it be? It could be negotiated. Right now, he uses um, Monday through Friday from two to seven. I believe his yes. current application is from two to seven. All right. And then um, Saturdays and Sundays, it's all day. Yeah, usually like yeah. four or five hours yeah. total. I use it. Yeah. Okay. Then I just lock the door and leave. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Um, you know, once we open this up and and because we have in the past 
residents have used it for birthday parties and stuff on the weekend. Mm -hmm. I will just have to let him know in, in advance so he doesn't schedule anything. Right. But this is just a new position for us to be in owning the building. Yeah. You know, um, heating the building is what I'm thinking of in the wintertime and, you know, all that sort of thing. I just wanted to make sure you had lien waivers and insurance. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else? Primarily, uh, like, if a resident wanted to use it on the weekends, which normally that would be what they would be looking for, like a wedding reception yeah. or something like yeah. that, you'd, uh, well, hopefully a wedding reception, you'd have plenty of advance notice. Mm -hmm. And if you yeah. could reschedule so that it's available of course, yeah. for them, okay. and have some flexibility there. Okay. Yep. And, uh, yeah, as long as, like I said, this is all new to new to us as well, so as long as we can be flexible, I mean, you know, it would be nice to, like, one evening a week have an open gym or a yoga class or something. Yes, well, we're starting to stretch it Some class. Some asking from Hendon area if I can do open gym actually during the summertime. Yeah. A couple hours of, a couple hours, maybe off the week. Yeah. Just like one day. And what, what do they do at open for, for the basketball? Yeah, just for two hours, they just come in and work on their games. But obviously not probably more than 14, 15 people. Because they only two crowded. Yeah. yeah. So, just like limit, limited numbers. Limited numbers, yeah. if you would please, yes. And we're going to continue with the price that the school was paying or charging in. I know that. That was, what, $5? $5 an hour, yep. Um, Jeez, I'm, I don't... I don't I might have, we might have to discuss that. <laughs> My indoor arena, I got more than that, yeah. but somebody that wants to bring their horse in and ride. You know what, why no. don't we, um, can we just discuss that portion of it and get back to you? We won't make any big uh, of course, yeah. decisions. Yeah. I don't want to keep you from your class, yeah. and I don't want to just pull something off the top of my head. I think we would feel more comfortable. Am I hitting that right? Yeah. Yeah. Just talking yeah. about it a little bit. Yeah. I just have one last question. Sure. Um, is that possible just during the summertime? Because sometimes it gets really hot in the gym, mm -hmm. and the floors start getting wet because of the humidity. Right. Is it okay if I rent an AC? AC unit? Yes. Just uh, for the hours I use, probably two, three hours a day. Do you, do you uh, a floor AC unit? Is that what you mean? Or? No, just like a big air conditioning machine. I think some places rent it. Okay. I don't think you have any. The only windows you have is... There's no windows in the gym. No, yeah. there's only windows in the kitchen. Um, I guess it would depend on uh, what it uses for electricity. Yeah. yeah. Let us talk about that Sorry. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Spin the so, off the side of the what we'll do is we'll discuss it and we'll sure. kind of give Cindy a decision and yep. she can pass it to you and you can always come back to us and talk about it again. Thank you. you know. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Nice to meet you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Yeah, this is Jim's. Own. Okay. <laughs> I, th I thought the other person was you. I wish I was that tall. Yeah. <laughs> I keep getting shorter. I don't no, know. I like thought he was going to get his head on the door. I thought I'd make you taller. Yeah. Um, well, I'm How are you, Jim? I'm actually looking for a basketball place for my son, so I'm kind of like, you know, yeah, that's a good you information. You might want to talk to this yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly. Well, I, I was trying to get him in with uh, with Matt in, in Bangor, and the guy won't even schedule him. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, he's, wants to play. he's here all the time too. Oh, that was, Every day. He's, he's that's a great thing. I mean, you know, we, we we're part of our SU twenty two because we live in this one, so right. we were like this far over the line. Literally, the town offices are the same distance apart. Yeah. Um, but uh, we tried to find a place for my son to play because he's short. Yeah. He's got he's my wife's stature, so um, he's really struggling, and he just took an interest in basketball this year, and we can't find any place. I know they you know? don't do rec ball anymore. Um, well, he's aging out. He's in sixth grade, so at yeah. seventh grade they've been knocking off. And I'm like, yeah. you know, well, we'll wait for training, so hopefully you can make the team. Yeah. They take fifteen out of like a hundred. So yeah. yeah, it's it. You know, kids need a place like this to get off the stupid iPad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That garbage, the stuff is just rotting their brain. So exactly, you're always um, welcome. To, we have that outdoor basketball court. Don't forget too. We have one too. Yeah. But, you know, we have one of the. It's it's the interaction with other kids. Sure. You know, that's yeah, that's sure. what really. You know, I think it's what he likes. So. Yeah. Introduce him to fishing this weekend again, so hopefully that'll work. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about my kids, because <laughs> right. I am here to talk about HDB trails. Okay. Um, 
This has been in the making since August 2019. Uh, we've kind of lived through the pandemic days and, and all that stuff, so it's taken a long time to get to this point. Um, I don't know how much you've heard about Dixmond or, or what we've done there so far. Um, basically, we opened 10 miles of trails last year. Um, the first year, we literally sat there and scratched our heads and tried to figure out what to do um, because there's a lot of you know things that have to go on. Anyway, we have now are ready to to cross the line and come to Newburg. Um, hopefully, our plan is to make it all the way to the riverbed in Newport, uh, okay. Corinna. Um, it's a multi-year plan. It's not a not a single year plan. It costs a lot of money to, to do what we're trying to do. Um, we've got a forty thousand dollar net grant uh, mm -hmm. that we're, we're getting from the state this year. So we may be able to get more. I've asked for sixty. So you know, you ask for more, you hopefully get enough to get by right um but we're we're basically hiring contractors to to do trail work now um as much as we can we have you know club members that do a lot of work and yeah. have done all the work so far um but we're hoping to go more contractor route just because it's cleaner it's it, less volunteerism not that i don't like volunteering i just don't like volunteering 80 hours a week yeah. um and, and my club members are the same way you know you've got the same core seven to nine people that show up to do the work and it's 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 taxing you know yeah. everybody wants to ride but nobody wants to put in the time to work so we're, we're hiring contractors that's the that's a good thing um and the city is really pushing for that so what we're we're i guess i'm asking the board to do is number one would be to open up the discontinued town roads to atv use um, that means that we would take over the, the trails as far as maintaining them. Um, if we had a dusty condition, we'd deal with calcium, if that's okay with the board and, and, and you know, those things. Um, not everybody wants calcium. Some people would deal with the dust. It doesn't matter to me. Um, we don't really have that kind of an issue because we're not riding a railroad bed where it's a really fast ride and, and people are, are going really fast and, and uh, causing a lot of dust. But if we had a dust condition, you know, if the board's okay with it, we'll put down calcium. If not, then obviously we won't. We'll just slow people down. Have you guys talked to the um, Newburgh um, Snowmobile Club and that AT? There was an ATV club here, mm -hmm. and I thought the ATV club and the Snowmobile Club combined. I think the Newburgh ATV Club disbanded. Okay. Um, the nice. VP of our club is actually the trail master of the snowmobile club for Newburgh. Damon Wilson. Right. Okay. Bob Vino's grandson. Okay. All right. Everybody knows Bob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, what we're trying to do is use the snowmobile trails, the existing snowmobile trails, whatever we're going right. within reason. Um, if there's a you know a bog that's 400 feet long, we're not going to go through that. Right. Um, unless there's no other way, and then we have to put in a lot of money for bridges and those kind of things. Um, the, the, the first two years, I said, we didn't do much. Well, we did a lot, but we didn't do, we didn't accomplish a lot because we had to wait for CMP to get our permit to, to get the Dix one side open. We're, we're connected into um, the Thorndike trail system, mm -hmm. and as soon as the contractor will get off his butt and get up there and do the job, uh, we're connected into the Troy, I'm uh, sorry, not Troy, uh, Jackson Club system, which connects us into Belfast and that area. So we've got um, access right now uh, as it goes, you know, from Dixmont into about probably 700 miles of trails. All right. So uh, what, what town roads, what discontinued town roads are you just talking about? I knew you were going to get this question. I did not bring my laptop, which I really wish I did, but I was in a So hurry. he's talking about the Thurlow Road. Yeah, Thurlow Road. Beyond. Well, I, I don't think we're really actually using Thurlow Road. I think it's um, Old Mudget Road is, is the main one. Old uh, Mudget Road. Yeah. Croc, it is. is it Croxford? I don't remember that one. Croxford's the one that comes across. I got my map here. <laughs> oh, the one that I think that, that's yeah. the actual trail, yes. Yeah. Because um, um, we did actually ride through it. Because we were coming through Mudget down. Um, right, we do go down Mudget Road just a little bit. Right, and cut down through. Uh, you got me all. And these are you trying to get really over here. to Etna Carmel? Is that what you're? The, no, Carmel. This, Dysarts. this year we're going to hit Dysarts. That's our goal. Um, Dysarts store. The store at Dysarts, yeah. and then you know, right. if we can go beyond there, great. But that's our goal. Hit Dysarts this year. I've talked to Tim. We we were good on the landowner permission there. I've talked to Heath Miller seems to be popular tonight. Yeah. Um, he's okay with us, us coming out across the field. He said, oh, there's a big mud hole I'd like to have you fix for my dad. 
no problem because we had to fix it anyway. Um, this isn't the trails that even your old club had. I, okay. It is the trails. It may be the same land, but it's not the same caliber. The other, um, yeah. The other thing that when when I met with Jim, if you remember back, um, we had a request to open town roads, right, as ATV trails, yeah. and you said that you would look into the idea if there was a club involved. I don't remember that time. I thought it was a flat out no. <laughs> I thought it was a flat out no. Too. Can I make a comment? Um, back when I was working here, I remember that when the roads were discontinued, um, I believe it was April, Lee and Levitt was first selectman, my uncle, and those roads were converted to recreational trails and bridle paths. Yeah, that well, that's time. what I was just going to say. Within when when we had a meeting with the lawyer a few years yeah. ago about yeah. over there in the the uh, the roads are discontinued roads, but they are trails and bridle paths. Yeah, that's right. So, um, Redmond and Winchell, Ed Barra oversaw that whole procedure. Yeah, and well, right to the uh, was it Ed that was here that day, yeah. that night? And yeah. we 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 know this. Right. It's just it would be helpful to have the list of roads from you that you are. In an idea of where you're, where you're. Yeah, the, the map is. It, Cindy does have the map. Okay, there. I have the map too, but I'm not sure. Is it the yellow it, one it, the trail or uh, the red one the let trail? Let me take a peek because I've I found a lot of maps. But uh, <laughs> yes, it'd be this yellow trail. The yellow um, one is the trail. Now I'm curious. Is that called the big trail? I, I think this might be the incorrect map, and I might have to email you a different one because okay. we drove. We dro rode the trail. Okay. Um, I talked to you know some landowners and I said, you know, can I can I drive through here and see what's what's available? And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. So uh, we gingerly, you know, made our way through. I know we came on on Old Bates Road, uh, Bates Road and, and Old Mudge Road, um, and then we got into basically where the Stoneville Trail goes into to uh, Dysart. So we're going through Eastfield. Um, so we come out. Did you go through those big, did you go through Whitcomb Fields? Yes. Okay, so. And I, I do need to talk to them too. Still. Yes, you should talk to Ricky Whitcomb because a few years ago he shut off those fields. Right. This, a few years ago, it's probably been five or six years ago now. He shut off that trail because. People he had this field. Well, he, were, he hayed and he had uh, shredded beer cans in his hay, uh, yes. and which is really was very, very bad for his oh, house. Yeah, no, it's fatal. You know, yeah. So, um, um, you, so I was just, that's the only thing yeah, I, no, that I, came I, to mind. I, he's on, I don't know if, if one of my club members has already talked to him or not. I, I'm trying to divide and conquer and stuff. Sure. <laughs> everything myself. Sure. So uh, there is a list, in, and I know he's on that list okay. as far as people we need to talk to. Okay. Um, but I wanted to get here and talk to you guys as well because it doesn't make sense to, you know, if you get blocked in one major area, you have to find another way right. around. So you know um, what I think, the ne I think the next step would be is, in, if I'm looking for guidance here. So if we got a, a list of, like we're going this trail to this discontinued road, then this trail leads us to this discontinued road. If we could have that information mm -hmm. and so, you know, we could maybe. I, I actually probably could pull it up if you want to give me just one minute. Well, you could give it to Cindy, and we could put it on the website, Cindy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily know if I want to open the road, the regular roads to ATV. So, well, Some, yeah. yeah, something else that you might want to consider: uh, people who reside on those roads. I know Brian, you're one. They're down on Thriller Road, but I. Right. But a lot of my son is one who has put a lot of money out of his own personal pocket to repair the road. And it would be a shame to have it torn up. I know how full wheelers can be. Right, and, and that's what I wanted to get to when I was saying it's not your old ATV club. The state has their thumb on us all the time. Mm. They're, they're willing to put up money. Um, but our club, I, I, I can tell you, I have you know calls with the state supervisor pretty much on a weekly basis to, to you know, hey, how do we deal with this situation or, or what, what can we do here? Mm -hmm. um, well, how can we make this better? But, you know, I'm not saying everything's going to be a railroad bed. We're, we don't want that for, for the area. No, I mean, you want a trail. We want a trail. We want something scenic. We, we walk over Hog Hill and Dixmont. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we also make sure that there's, there's you know, water boards in place so that you don't have 
the whole hill walk wash out. And if we see washing or we see problems, we, we either shut down the trail and fix it or we fix it, you know, however it's got to be done. Um, am I going to say there's never going to be an issue? Absolutely not. I can't, I can't fix stupid. Um, I can only, you know, yell at them and tell them, hey, come on, guys, we're all working at this together. Let's, you know, if you want a trail, if you want a trail, then respect it. The trails that we're asking for are all being written, even Whitcomb's Field blazing path right down through it he actually has a sign to stay in the trail right yeah. um you know so you're what what we're basically doing is legalizing what everybody's doing anyway right um will it bring a little bit more traffic absolutely because you're, you're opening up to other trail systems and they're going to bring people from away right. um that brings business to town um tim dysart is absolutely over the moon on the idea right. um you know he said yeah we can do a park and ride or, or we got the park and ride you know if, if you're good with it um, we can be good with that so um, Who's going to be policing uh, <laughs> anybody that is not respectful? That's Believe it or not, that's the, the ATV club, I say that, the ATV riders police themselves like nobody I've ever seen. I, Dick Smont has had all kinds of problems, complaints, on at least a weekly basis. Uh, people riding on the roads, doing this, doing that. Um, I literally spent probably... 400 hours dealing with the Dick Swan Select Board and trying to get to use the roads. And I literally didn't want to use the roads. I just needed them to say, okay, so what CMP would say, okay. And anyway, long story short, the, once we opened the trails, we have not had a single complaint about ATVs. Um, will, there, will there be one? Absolutely, there will be one. Yeah. And, and I know there will, but we will take care of it. You've got somebody that's that's got a vested interest in making sure that things are taken care of. And our club members are all that, that way. We have a following um, of approximately 2,300 people. Um, we're, we're not small potatoes. Even though we just started, it's, it's been a building process right. since the, the thing started. And we do police it. So I think that if we could gather that information, like where you want to go, mm -hmm. what discontinued roads you want to use, we could put that out to the public in our email, in our newsletter, or our Facebook page, or our e-news, and just let people know and that you know they're a responsible club. They've been working at this for the last five years. Maybe even Great. a contact name and, and, and phone number. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. You just want to make my phone ring off the hook. When are they going to open the trails? Because that's what I did about daily. Uh, when, oh, when are you? When it, we haven't opened Dick's one yet because we've had, you know, we've got a mud issue. Uh, we just just spent a small fortune fixing it. Okay, so how about a Facebook page or following? Yes, oh, you, yes. Something you can like follow that. On the, the Dixmont rant and rave. Oh, we're all over that too. Oh yeah, no, I got it. I'm a local celebrity in Dixmont <laughs> somehow. Yeah. Um, it's um, all ATV related, apparently. But, um, uh, I have a, um, okay, there's a um, trot, trail riders of today, which is a group of horse people, mm -hmm. and they use the trails too. Uh, can, if your organization could uh, educate. We do. We, yeah. yeah. We, we, so that, um, well, that's one of the things that we, we take yeah. a lot of pride in is that we Recapable. don't just, you know, have these trails be our own trails. They're, they're, they're shared trails with everybody. And we teach our riders to stop. Uh, remove their helmets if they're wearing one, which we know everybody doesn't wear helmets, but uh, it's not like snowmobile season where you freeze if you don't wear one. So, um, but stop the machine, shut off the engine, and take advice from the, the rider. Um, and, and that's that. Is it perfect? No, but we try to educate people. We teach, you know, in, in ATV safety classes, we teach that as well. Um, so it, it we, seems to be working. I, I think we're doing a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had no encounters, no no complaints from horse riders uh, about ATVs. We did have one right before, right after we got permission. We had a kid think he owned the roads because we got permission to use a couple of roads, and he thought he could go on every road in town. Mm -hmm. And he ran into a horse, and of course, she got out our phone and recorded the thing. Mm -hmm. And the interaction was not good. Um, mm -hmm. The individual was was dealt with. He got educated. He did. He sure. did. And and we have not had an issue since. And like I said, that was before we even opened the trail last year, but we did have that interaction. And, and you know, uh, we use it as a learning experience. Um, you know, we use it to, to teach people that this isn't okay. This is the right, you know, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. And 
um, like I said, it's not a bunch of outlaws. It's it's uh, a bunch of people that you know really care about the sport of ATVs. It's it's a multi-billion-dollar industry. The state realizes that, um, and we've got a major gap right here. This that's I started this whole thing. I bought a side by side, and I said, "Where's the trails?" And everybody laughed. At me. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, "What trails?" I said, I "Guess I better extend my trailer." And then I said, "Anybody want to start a club?" And all these towns just started. You know, it all started with one Facebook post. And so you have a contact in Newburgh, right? Yeah. It's a, it, so that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, and the trails would be marked. Oh, absolutely. You actually have some marked trails, believe it or not. Right. You still have some old ones. Yeah. But yeah, we, we, we signed them very well. Um, we probably go a little overboard, but it's better to have too many signs than More not information enough. is always yeah. better. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we, we're, we're going to build it on a digital map. So um, we you know, basically have an app that records where I ride, and, and that will go up to the different app places like sure. you know, Polaris Ride and, and uh, GPS Trail Masters. But yeah, that's why don't you give that information to Cindy, mm -hmm. and then we'll, uh, I don't know when the next newsletter is, is it after town meeting? It can be, yeah. It can be. So if you put out either, put we'll kind of put together a little article, she mm -hmm. can email it to you, is it correct, you know, yep. the information correct, and put a contact. There and uh, yeah, what I'll do is I'll do a kind of uh, and, and you did you have any thoughts? No, okay, okay. information that can be picked up at the town meeting. Um, yeah, when is your um, town meeting next week? Next week, next week, Thursday. Um, yeah, we, we probably can get something together for that. Okay. So, yeah, um, I think Damon's coming. Maybe no one. No, he's, he, he just went to switch tonight, so yeah. I, what time um, is your, it's Thursday, it must be Thursday 6 30, night. 6.30, yeah. Yeah, no, he'll be on the road. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then Chuck will be there. Yeah, yeah, so um, I, I will see if I can make it possible to or I can get somebody to, to okay. cover. Um, or or if Chuck could fill us in, even. I, I haven't talked to Chuck about it, so I, I, okay. I don't want to put words in Chuck's mouth. Sure, I, I've met him a couple times, yeah. but I don't really know him, okay. so yeah. um, I, I don't want to. Yep, volunteering or something that I yep. have absolutely no idea if he didn't even have an interest in, in helping with, but um, I, I, I definitely could talk to Damon and see okay. where he is because I know those two are like that. So, okay. um, But yeah, that's pretty much it. The other thing that I, I would like to ask is if we needed to deal with a situation um, where we needed over a 15 foot, 1,500 foot crossing, we have, we have a right as an ATV club to have a crossing that 50, goes 1,500 feet down the road. So say you've got a, a major river and you had to cross a bridge. Right. And as long as that bridge isn't over 1,500 feet, we're okay to use that yeah. without actually going to the town or state or whoever owns the road. Um, but we always try to cover our basis and, and you know, we, we want to work with people. And like you were mentioning, um, we, we want to make sure that the people that live there are respected. So if Give you a perfect example, Piper Mountain Tree Farm. Um, we're going right through their front driveway. Um, we went there, we talked to them, we said, you know, it's a discontinued town road. You know, we'd like to go through here. Is there some, what, what would you like to see? And they said, just keep it slow, you know. And we've done really well with that. It, like in Dixmont, we set our feet loads at 15 miles per hour on the roads that we do use, um, which is really not much of anything. But it's, uh, um, we set it at 15 and people see to say stay at 15 or lower. Um, we have not had issues with speed, but you know, if, if somebody's like, hey, we, you know, we're going through uh, Piper Mountain, we'll probably put it at five miles an hour through. Yeah. through There's only a few drive. things landowners really want. They want you to stay on the trail, don't tear up their field, their lawn, their ditches, their water, you know, that sort of thing. So, yep. I mean, yeah. We rode four wheelers for a long time with our kids and our kids rode. And, yeah, like, like you were saying, Whitcomb, I think we'd probably fence that whole entire thing yeah. as long as he was okay with it. Right. Um, Just, or, or, or a few signs that say absolutely no yeah, going off 10, the trail. Feet, eight, What's eight, the <laughs> length that you can travel with one of those down in Main Thurvia? 1,500. 1,500. They, they, the they drive all over the green, green on it? That, on the 1,500 feet? They go tear and buy our farm. Uh, I mean, they're just full blast. Where's your farm? North Road. Yeah, it's not a legal trip. No. So no. This, this is what I've literally found, and this is not only coming from me, but coming from the state. When you open up access to these roads and we set speed limits, people slow down. But the reason they're flying by your farm 
is because they don't have permission and they know if they get caught, they're busted. Yeah. They're going to get yeah. a fine. So if you're don't legally going to get have permission, you're going to have permission, you'll slow down and, t and take your time, and they don't want to lose access to it. However, I don't want to get caught, so the faster I go, the less likely somebody's going to catch up to me. Right. And that's the theory that people have. Right. Um, me, I'm the, I'll pot along and, you know, wave to everybody. <laughs> I might even stop and talk to people because I don't want to get in trouble. I have a different theory in, in how, how I'm going down the road. So usually I'm scouting trails if I'm, I'm going down the road anyway, but um, that's, that's just the theory that I go by. It's like, okay, if I saw this guy going down the road at 60, I'd be mad. But if I saw him going on the road at 10 miles an hour and he's waving to me and, hey, you know, saying how, how's your day and whatnot, I'm not going to have a problem. It's pretty hard to have a problem with that guy. Right. So. so if you if you get us some information, then we'll get some information sure. put out. Okay. I'll make sure you have it before uh, we get to Thursday. We could just tell people where you're headed and that yep. sort of thing. I, I should be able to have it to you tomorrow, so okay. it'll be that, that difficult. Okay. And then we can even discuss it a little bit and, and put something together. As far as permission for using these discontinued town roads, mm -hmm. you, you don't need anything from... I probably would have you sign a waiver just just because um, you know just granting us permission to, to use it as a trail. If it was a town road, you you would handle it in your your warrant or, or something like that. Yeah. But uh, we have a, a state form that basically gives us permission to use it. Can you can you email her that absolutely. form? Absolutely. Yeah. Because what I would do, Cindy, is put to look at that form. And then maybe we could put together a little paragraph that goes with it. Says you ride these trails at your own free will. We do not maintain them. We do not guarantee their safety. If you hurt yourself on this discontinued town well, road, it's your responsibility, basically. I, I've got to look at the paperwork, but I believe we, we ran into that with um, as far as work being done on that. Right. It wasn't nothing that you guys authorized. Right. We don't. Um, we don't maintain that. You know, discontinue you, you, right. If you're going to do something like that, you do it. And then, that's why I think you know if we did like, just to give you an example. Let's say somebody had an accident in Heath Miller's field, and he signed our our, our form, um, the state form. He would have an automatic insurance policy uh, that covers him, and he is held harmless because he's opened it up for recreation. That's what I'm saying. Use. When, it should, when there should be a whole harmless clause. Right. Well, if, when you open up anything for recreational use, the state law is you're held harmless. So they'd have to go to federal law and yep. went over the state. I it, just don't you know, see anybody. That's good anybody information to put into an article, yeah. too. I mean, yeah. that, that we've covered that base. Right. right. And I, I will uh, get some information from Brian Bronson just to be sure that I'm I don't want to tell you something and then go, oh, I'm sure. totally wrong here. So mm -hmm. let me get Brian's information to, to fill in here, and I'll make sure you have his contact information so you can, you can ask him any questions. Okay. The guy's a wealth of knowledge, so um, he'll, he'll absolutely Because I did not know that if you opened up a trail for recreation, you are automatically held harmless. Yeah, same thing with hunting. You know, if you allow somebody to hunt your property, um, you're actually held harmless. Um, unless you do something to try to cause harm. Like if you put a, tr a wire across trying to take somebody's head off, yeah. you're still in trouble. <laughs> you're not getting out of that one. Yeah. But um, as long as you're not purposely trying to, to hurt somebody, you're never going to get in trouble. Okay. Um, basically, you're, you're held, you know, you're, you're held, uh, I don't know what the proper word I'm looking for. Harmless. 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 Yes. Harmless. Yes. yes. It's a matter of liability. Yep. So. Malice. All right. So, any other questions? No, I think that's it for thank me. You. Okay, thank, thank you very much. You. Thank you for being patient. No problem. Thanks. I got all kinds of education today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fire and rescue, obviously, uh, friends up here? Or? Nope. It's report. It's in okay. very comprehensive. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so that's, we got that. Le Gary, how's the library? Still there. Still there. Chug it, chug it along. Okay. We have no animal control report? No. Okay, town manager, you are up. All right. So, first of all, I wanted to let you know that we are on the list for Susan Collins. That's the letter I gave you. Mm -hmm. um, for the million dollars for the Agricultural Committee. I'm, they will let us know 
how the next step goes. Okay. I think we stand a better chance than some of the others I saw that they put in. I gave you also a copy of the general assistance audit that we had, and uh, he had three things on here. Um, and I have addressed in each one of those. Um, when I first read the first one, I'm going, I have a notice on the door. Okay. That's, that's all we were required, but... Um, We've always had a notice on the door. Right, but evidently it's required to be on the website now, so it's now on the website. Okay. okay. Um, and the second one was, do we require work search? I said, no. We haven't had any general assistance in two years. Mm -hmm. We've never, you know, if somebody comes in, you know, well, you can ask them, are you looking for employment? You know, have you met? Yeah. That's, 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 but that's I would be kind for two years. Yeah. No. Well, and you so, have to be careful. Uh, a lot of that stuff, you know. You can't ask. You can't ask. Yeah. Right, exactly. Uh, when they fill out an application for it, is there a place on the application? Uh, yes or no? My decision. When, when I said the decision. Well, I mean, when they apply for the is there an general is there assistance? No, is there, is there no, no, are you working? They, no, but when I give the decision, yay or nay, if, if it's a, a, a yay, there's a, a spot on the, on the decision where in order to qualify a second time, they would have to do work search and, and give me evidence that they've done it. So, so actually, I, your answer would be yes. Well, it would be yeah. if I'd had any general assistance <laughs> in the last two years. So yeah. that's why I said no, I have not had any because right. I took it as, you know, have you required? No, I haven't. I haven't had any general yeah. assistance in two years. So um, the third one um, was a fair hearing officer. Um, we don't appoint. There hasn't been one. We can't even get yet. a sexton. How in the world are we going to get a fair hearing <laughs> There has not been a fair hearing, an official one. What, what if uh, somebody volunteered to be a fair hearing officer? Uh, I mean, they well, generally wouldn't be worked to death. I, I, the <laughs> only other time that I have had an instance for a fair hearing officer was a long time ago, um, and we just found somebody. Right. Yeah. We don't find somebody to fill the position every yeah. year. We just dealt with it. Oh, so okay. I, I have. I have somebody that would qualify, and uh, you know, if you needed a fair hearing officer, she she would probably say yeah. But she she works for Penguins. Yeah. So, um, so I have a lady you probably know, Kate Bartlett. Yes. No. She is. She is from here in town. She doesn't live here in town right now. She just lives over the line in Camden. She would like to work as a sort of a rec department for a specific reason right now, but to expand it. Um, she'd like to do, um, I think it's what they call tailgate basketball. Does that sound familiar? Kind of. It's like a pickup game. Pickup. Pick that game. Yes. <laughs> they all they all meet. All new to me. Everybody meets every Tuesday night yep. for a pickup game, basically. Yep. Yeah. So she'd like to organize some of those and raise some money to put events around the basketball hoops. Okay. To start out. Um, and also have a place um an organized this pickup. Be oh, no, that's a beautiful basketball court yeah. out there, actually. And she'd like to put the fence up and she'd like to get the lines painted on it. And I told her, you know, that I'd talk to you. Um, Is she just looking to use the right outdoor? Now, yes, right okay. now, yes. Yes. So, um... What was her first name? Kate. Kate. She, she is uh, not rich. She's Richie's niece. Right. She's Irene and Billy Bartlett's daughter. They oh, were she used to live down in Bar Harbor. Harbor. Yeah. Is it Keith? Like Keith Miller? Keith? 
So if you're all right with that, she's going to kind of, and she's going to get other people involved. Okay. Um, the only thing I've got here is if you start collecting money for a purpose, it has to come here. Yes. It has to be accounted for. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's the only thing I got to say about that. How about you? I see you're a little, oh. I see well, you twitching a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a perfect example of what we were talking about earlier with this guy taking over the, the gym. I if agree. We, if we develop, say this person wants to develop a rec department more than what that is, they're going to have access to the gym. Right. What if when we wanted to pick up games during the winter time? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. We're going to have to... And you may have to limit him. Uh, yeah. You may have to. Yeah, that's yeah. unreasonable. I, I, you know, that's unreasonable what we're doing. It's it's a little it's a little over and above. I agree. Yeah, because the RSU 22 needs to do it Yeah. So, all right. Mm -hmm. So, the other thing, Tom Eaton. Yes. Ed is going to be our moderator. Ed Bear? Yes. Oh, nice. Oh, good. And I thought he retired. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's, <laughs> he's semi retired. Yeah. Okay. Um, June 30th, I had asked um, for the office to be closed at 2. Mm -hmm. But with just Kate and I here, um, we're thinking maybe we need to close at noon because we've got to do everything. We haven't got that third. Yeah. Thing. Seven so years. is that okay? Yes. To do the new. I I I I'm fine with it. You guys, all set. Just make sure you post you it. Post it. Post it. Yeah. So the last thing you put it on the sign down front. Also, just uh, June thirtieth. Yeah. Closing at noon. Yeah. Yeah. And that way they don't have to come up and see it on the door if they want to. Yeah. So I'm going to give you this. I just opened this today in the mail. Which. I kind of knew was coming. <clears throat> and it's not only coming from these guys, it's going to come from all the other towns that are that have a full-time department. Um, But they were, of all towns, well staffed. Not as much as you think. Um, I can't remember. Were you, you two on the board back when we um, wanted to do the negotiations with Dick Smont? Yep. Yes, we were. Where we were going to do level one. Level yep. yep. They didn't want to deal with us at all. They didn't, they weren't, it was all or nothing. Yeah, it was all or nothing, right. So, this is sort of kind of the same thing. Um, Said in a much nicer way, though. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, what happens if they won't respond and we can't respond? You've got to wait for... Capital. Well, that's yeah, the that's thing. And and that's, that's the problem is, you know, um, one of the big issues is capital annual. Capital Ambulance is running into staffing issues too. Yeah. And more often than none, a call goes out because it used to be that we relied on rescue. If there was nobody in rescue responding, Capital was on their way with a paramedic. Right. Uh, paramedic, they're not even required, they can't even, the new contract, they, they're not even required a paramedic anymore because they can't staff them. So then, now what we're getting is call goes out, rescue responds or doesn't respond. Capital comes across and says we have no available units. We have no available units. And that's when dispatch comes back and they call him or they call the next. So I've, I've actually sat down um, with Chris. I've 
No, I've sat down, but I've talked to Chris on the phone. Um, because we got to do a, something for transport. You know, even even with our rescue people, Brent and Scott, if they get their license and, and we get them available, because right now we just have Craig. But if we do get two more members, um, we need to, number one, look at just what they're looking at. Because you're still two people, or two and a half people, they're going to get burned out fast if all of these towns are short-handed, number one. Number two, um, we've got to, and I will be making some phone calls, um, transport unit. We can't rely on capital anymore. And I can tell you I have talked to Hamden, and they're talking seven or eight hundred dollars a call. <laughs> they would bill us or they would bill the yeah. patient? No, they would bill us. Does Carmel or Herman play a factor in, in, in any of that Carmel's stuff? Carmel's having trouble too. Yeah. We're all having trouble staffing. How many times have we had to use them? Quite a few. Quite a few. Quite a few. So I think what I am going to do, first of all, I will, because this just come in, I haven't seen Brent, but I think, and I will talk to him tomorrow about it. Um, but I think my first stop is going to be to contact Kevin because regionalization of these services is so important. It, right it's now. it's it's going to be it's pretty much our only choice, right. you know, because each town has a little bit. But it's like us, even with two people. You get a rescue call in this right now in this town. Mm -hmm. Craig's the only one. He comes from Hamden. Yeah, I know. You know. But if we do get these two new members, still, you get a rescue call, they're going to go. You no, know? But that's two people that you're relying on. But if you get a call in Dixmont and they go, and you get a call in Newburgh, and they're in Dixmont. So we're in the same boat. So um, I think that we all, the towns around, need I think to right. sit down and they talk and try to, to I, a lot of towns are doing it, yeah. you know, and I know a lot of people on departments, you know, it's just the staffing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, there's no way that we're ever going to be a transport unit. This no. town would not afford it. No. No. Uh, but I think the towns around us, you know, look at them and, you know, maybe a combined Thing. The big thing in, with Hamden, and, and he was very honest with me, they get a call and send guys out here. Fire, it's a different thing. But for medical, on their ambulance, mm -hmm. if they leave that station to come to one of these other towns, and Herman does the same thing, because they're a full-time unit, mm -hmm. they have to do a callback. Before they can leave, they have to secure callback people to cover the station so that Hamden is covered while they're out here. Which is salaries, overtime, you know, because you're calling back people. These full-time departments. Carmel's a different story. They're still volunteer of sorts. And they've got two or three people, I guess, that are working on their EMT license, like we have too, mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to get in touch with Kevin and, and a couple of the other towns and see that are struggling just like this, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I knew this was coming, I didn't know when, Right. Um, but you're going to see a lot of those towns, Herman, um, right. Bangor, they, Bangor won't go to Bangor. Yeah, they're just taking care of their own. Yeah. yeah. And that's all they can do. Yeah. That's all they can do. But they can't come to Newburgh and jeopardize their residents. Right. And capital is struggling for units. Mm -hmm. Number one, the, the staffing. And number two is they send their rigs where the money is, and that's on transports. Mm -hmm. They're transporting to Boston and all kinds of places, right. Brooklyn. 
you know, that's where the money is. So they don't have, but we have a contract with them, but I don't know if we're, they turn around and say there's no units available. Right. What are we supposed to do? What, what are the towns? No, no. <coughs> Newport is uh, equal distance <coughs> from here to Bangor. Uh, can you do anything with, with Newport or? I doubt it because Newport just bought their own ambulance. Yeah. Because they were being serviced by capital. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Any other towns that have their own ambulance? Hamden, Harmon. Carmel has an ambulance. Um, right now, during the day, Unity? Four days a week. Unity? I'm not sure. But I think that's going to be a day when we smaller towns are going to have to group together. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. They've talked sure. regionalization for, for a long, long, for a long time. time. Yes. yes. You know, exactly. and I did see, and I can't remember where it was, where, you know, they there was a, a, a group of towns that were, you know, going to going to do something. So I think I'm going to, you know, get in contact. Uh, well, yeah. And let's know and let us know what you set up. And, yeah. But I, it, it's, 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 um, it's not a problem just only to us. You know? No, it's, it's, every, it's all everybody. All the small towns. But you know what I see too, with the, the numbers of these increasing substantially. Yeah. You know? Has, yep. What? Six years. It's yep. it's really gone up. Yep. So I will get back to you on this. Okay. Um, and the only other uh, this could go under roads, but um, it, I got a call from Craig Ryan's the other day. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how I haven't missed this or why somebody hasn't said something about it in the past. All the people that have worked on the roads and been on the roads and seen the roads. and There are two, three, possibly, I know there's more than two, but I'm not sure how many. There's two apple trees on the North Road by Craig Brown's driveway. Mm -hmm. And it's right from his driveway headed towards Lindsay Road, mm -hmm. right on that little no, that's it. That's it's that knoll yeah, that yeah. Yeah, corner right when, there. When the apples come off, they're in the road. <laughs> well, I, I went over there. He called, and I'm I'm over there, and I'm going. You know, all these people that have worked <coughs> on our roads. We had a, a road foreman for two or three years. You know, and why has nobody said anything about? two or three trees that are anywhere from 10 to 12 inches on the butt in the ditch. Yeah. I, I just didn't understand it. <laughs> but I, nobody, first, nobody, uh, nobody ever wants to cut down an apple tree. That's how I... <laughs> yeah. Nobody ever wants yeah. to cut down an apple tree. Yeah, well, don't try picking the apples because you'll get run over. Right. So maybe so, it's time to cut that apple Craig, tree. Craig says they're blocking his view. They are in the right way of the road. Um, so I have two choices. Did he want to cut them? Well, I don't know. Because <laughs> um, we can, he, he they're can under the power line going to his house, mm -hmm. which he says the line belongs to him. Mm -hmm. um, but they're in the right way of the road. And so we have a couple of choices. We can contact Amira because they are under the power line, mm -hmm. and they're in our right of way. We're not supposed to touch them and see if they'll take care of them. All right. Or we can hire um, uh, Patrick. Patrick Dean, because anybody we hire to cut them, we hire has to be certified right. to do that. Let's call him mayor first. Person. And yeah. Oh that's the person. Why person. why does why doesn't he just cut the truth? 
I don't know. Good question. I don't know. Are he, is he looking for permission to cut them? Or he wants somebody to come I think cut them? that's what he was, but I I wasn't comfortable giving him permission. Is it up into the power lines? His power line. Jeez, I wouldn't have oh I'd have goodness. somebody professionally going. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? I know I wouldn't be cutting it. <laughs> so, um, call Verson first. Call Verson first. Okay, that's what See what they say. And if, if, if they happen to be removed prior to by some mysterious circumstance, <laughs> then so be it. I mean, Wasn't there a problem years ago with... Uh, uh, clearing trees in the right of way by a resident who was very upset. And I remember Buddy Belcher speaking about how people needed to be contacted before trees are cut. Am I remembering that correctly or no? We had, somebody there was, were some trees cut that somebody was not happy about. Right. Yeah. Well, clear, but it was a legitimate clearing of the, right. in the road. Right. Yeah. Because I know the, the, there's their house, and then there's the, um, it's Priscilla's old house. Priscilla came right out of Priscilla right out old house that sits on that knoll. And there's an apple tree here. There's their driveway, and then that corner goes like this. And those trees right there. There's two apple trees, one on either side. Yeah. yeah. And they're they're just about in the road. Yeah. yeah. So like I said, no one ever wants to cut an apple tree. <laughs> but they're not that tall. They're not. Touching. Yeah, they're squatty. They yeah. block in the view of the cars coming out of right. the driveway. Yeah, so they're wide. Yeah. But you just cut yeah. them. And Craig knows. Sometimes you I just will. have to cut an apple tree, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I will uh, I will uh, call Bruce first. Do we have have we heard back from Ed on um, when he was gonna do grinding or start that grinding or Anything like Grinding, that? Grinding, they're supposed to start, what did he say? First part of June okay. for the things. Right. Um, they've done the patching of the Yes, I saw pool. the my favorite. They're going back and patched. fix the Chapman Road. There's an issue with that. But, uh, they did that. Um, but they're renting the machine, I believe, either the first or the end of this month. Okay. So. And he said it was going to be a big machine. Yes. Bigger machine. Yeah. Yep. Did she patch that one out front here too? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that here? I'm sorry? The one right out front here. Yeah. Cool. It's the one on the Lindsay Road got me one night. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, that was awful. Thought I'd take my right tire right off. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Okay. So, anything else, Cindy? Yeah, I got one road. That didn't make it on the agenda. You are all right with it. So we have a resident, Tommy Jackemeyer. You know where he lives? No. Kennebec Road. Kennebec Road. Kennebec Road. Road. Yeah. And Will Smith. Now uh, Will Brown. So Tommy lives right up close to the road. Will lives up in here. Well, there's a right of way that goes up a little ways, and it used to veer off and go to a house up in here mm -hmm. and then it went up to Will's driveway. Mm -hmm. So the people that bought that house up there um, was uh, Holly and Josh Bragan and they um, have sold that house with some land and but are keeping the back land. So the driveway that goes up to that house um, they are spurring off that to go up to, to their, their back property, way. to the back property to build a house. Okay. So because there's more than one household on there, they we have to have a road. A road mm -hmm. name. A road name. Okay. They'd like to have a clover lane so they can get addresses. I don't, I don't have any problem with clover lane. Do you no. have a problem with clover lane? How about diesel road number two? Diesel <laughs> <laughs> oh. ride. Do you have, you all set with clover oh, lane? Clover is <laughs> yeah, we're all okay. with that. So, all right. well so we can address. They want to put numbers on and get mailboxes and yes. all that stuff. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, I think that's it for me. Okay, you guys, excuse me, have anything else? We don't have this. We don't have to sign a school warrant, do we? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. Let's, yeah. let's sign a school warrant then. Did you skip over cemetery or did I miss it? There was nothing for cemetery. Mm. Oh, um, the Hill Cemetery across from us, when they put the new posts in, uh, there was a, a, like a planter type yep. thing. Well, that kind of got, uh, uh, I won't say demolished, but. Uh, it, it's not attractively <laughs> put back together. Okay. Uh, Heather Lloyd said that uh, she would go over and try to fix it uh -huh. uh, and get it so it it looks presentable. Yeah. But uh, when when they put the new post in, they kind of. The posts are, they, I think what they did was they tried to put the posts in the planters and they walked it. Okay. So we have three that have those planters. Um, did the same thing up to normal. Yes, they did. Destroyed it. Yeah. Yeah. And so they set the sign just to one side. Um, we, a few years ago, looking, begging people to help take care of them. Mm -hmm. Lois takes care of the Knowlton one. Mm -hmm. um, Rosanna used to do the hill. Rosanna but used to do hill, but she doesn't anymore. She moved. And uh, the one down to Brookside um, needed to be tore out anyway. Those bushes were breaking it apart. I, I can't, I've been by hill and I've been by Knowlton. Um, I can't remember if I've been down by Brookside. Um, but those bushes, Gary said, those are those prickly bushes you said. Junipers. Yeah. Junipers. They should have never been put in a planter. No. Yeah. They spread. They just busted it right out, yeah. probably. Yeah, really the yeah. did. Broke yeah. it all to pieces. So um, I haven't had a chance to get around, but I will. Um, and if that one needs some repair. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Okay. Well, Hill, I, I told Heather that, you now I'm pretty good with the shovel. So I told her <laughs> that, and so is she. So uh, we'll go over and, and, you know, fix it so it, so it looks good. Yeah. Uh, yeah tell them in the future, nothing except geraniums. Yeah. yeah. No, I've got, <laughs> I've got lots of pretty perennials at the Norton. Have you? They were pretty until they took the metal posts out and decided to uproot everything. Okay, so there's three copies of the school warrant okay. and it's the second page. Um, there we go. That was uh, Amos Dewey. Oh, right there. Down at the bottom. Did you? Yeah. It says countersign oh, and there's three. Oh, I thought it was older than that. Okay. 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 Still driving? Yes, so Can I make copies of that? Yeah. For you guys, that book list that you made? Yes. Yeah. I believe that you're still able to do it all. <laughs> I brought that up for that teacher getting that award, and if some, the award really wasn't from an organization that uh, most uh, parents are uh, familiar with, yeah. but they made a big deal out of it that she got that award. And I hope that he's making arrangements for some of his stuff. And uh, oh, when they saw yeah. what was yeah. on the book yeah. list, yeah. you know, people were just curious. Yeah. But, I don't know who well, thank God it's all coming up in the open now. Yeah. 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 I hope so. Yeah. No idea it was so widespread. That's why I asked if he had photographs and stuff. Parents behind us, usually when parents make a fuss. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Down there at the caucus, they lined up. And one after another. Because nobody knows what he's got anyway. Until no. all the time this is the other problem. used up. Nobody knows what's his uh, and what's his. One guy up back. Because he 
I don't know who he was or anything, but he <laughs> just agreed with it. Everybody, you know, the... the he disagreed or agreed? He disagreed. He disagreed. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, just... It would be like uh, all those in favor that, say uh, aye. When his parents sold the Sunshine Power and Light Company, they there, sold him a No matter what it was, <laughs> there's always got to be somebody. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, he went right up there to the hydro after they bought the Sunshine. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, was, I, I actually got a compliment about the, uh, him with the, <laughs> the cemetery on the north road. Uh, Deanna was up there doing some stuff for. Uh, and he's great and stuff and she said, I thought the cemetery looked really nice up there. You guys put up a new sign. Yeah, yeah. Are you the Hill Cemetery? The no. No. Oh, the no. Oh. Uh, no. Father. Yeah. Hill. No. Down by Joe Burke's. Arnold's Corner. Arnold's Corner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the guy seems to be right at it. Okay, is that, I just, the other, the last thing, I don't know if you saw this, I showed it to these guys. Years, a few years ago, we voted not to join the MRC, yes. and this article is about people, what well, the towns are going to end up paying, because mm -hmm. the MRC and all that Hamden plant has gone belly up, of course. And Best uh, thing Newburgh ever did, right, yeah. Brian? Oh, yes, yeah. the sure. Brian thing. Yes, thank the Lord. Sure. Voters had some common sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cindy did a lot of research on it, and we we talked about that. It wasn't even close, as I recall. No, and we I, talked about it and talked about it. Remember, yeah. we had two yeah. or three meetings. We yeah. had uh, public hearings. We had a couple, three public hearings. Just there wasn't an existing plant in the United States that was working. <laughs> they were going to do it in Hampton, Maine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so anyway, okay. So we all set. Do we want to set up a time for a meeting before town meeting to go? Through the um, through the articles or any have any questions or that's totally up to you guys. Do you want? I mean, we could we could set up one for like next Monday or Tuesday morning. Uh, voting is Tuesday, right? Meeting is Thursday. But I, I you know, we're pretty well went, went we did go through it all. Uh, the only th uh, like the uh, the donation that Penquist was looking for, it's still in there, it's, you know, requesting the 5000 Well, I think that's going to jump right out at them anyway. So, also, the Landmark Heritage Trust, I, I assume they sent this, uh, they spelled trust, T-U-R-S-T. -T. Yeah, that's oh, just, that's, somebody else put that in. They, I mean, they yeah, typed they, it they, up. They, yeah, they submitted oh, it. Right. But, uh, that, that kind of uh, he actually did that a few years ago when we called him. He goes, oh, just use the one from last year. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I think we're that. good. Well, oh, uh, well, no, nothing wrong. You try it. Okay, I've, I've seen primary these people get money before. Mm -hmm. Voting. Just by putting their name uh, in. That's right. I was trying to. Because... What I pulled up, it said that it's uh, in Augusta, but the main GOP primary, uh, is valid, there'll be ballots here, correct, to vote in the primary? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to get the information from the, uh, uh, off the web. To state primary. Yes. It's not a GOP primary. Well, it's who goes on the ballot. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the, yeah. uh, the primary. Yeah. So I was just saying, geez, that's a June 14th, and we've got the uh, election. We'll have three ballots. No, three ballots. One for the school, one for the town, and one for the state. Okay. So that is state. So I'm just throwing that out there if you guys want to meet. If you don't, if you're all comfortable. I think we'll probably be sitting staring at each other or just... <laughs> well, one item that I think needs some, at least a little thought is the fire station question. And I'm wondering if perhaps we should have maybe an amendment ready. Because I can't imagine the town accepting that the way it is. 
and we really need it to, to no. convince the, the um, contractors to provide a, an exact quotation, correct? I mean, they yeah. want to see some backing from the town. So I'm wondering if we couldn't amend it or have an amendment ready in case that would give that backing but not approve the expenditure without having another uh, public meeting and vote. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Because I, I just, I mean, there's a big article. I don't know if you saw it. I think we're dealing with it. And I, I can just see that getting refused. People demanding, you know, more information, you know, exact uh, specs on it. And not that I would blame I would want, it, I would want the same thing. I mean, we could, we could, we could um, create an amendment that would um, say this, this um, a little more than that approval is based on public <laughs> hearing with information regarding three complete bids for the project. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I thought of it. I couldn't come up with anything. Yeah. I just think it would be. I think there's three bids to help them We can comment on it. We can bring it up. Maybe there'll be four. I just remember what one thing I don't know. Yeah. So forth. Or Orrington was, yeah, they, that was a hard fought battle yes. out there. Yes. No. Um, are you are you available next Monday or Tuesday morning? I I, I, I kind of like to sit. I kind of like to talk about this this <coughs> Zoom use a little bit too. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of like to have the, besides a whole agenda, just have a, have that on the agenda. I as didn't well. hear what you said. The no. gym use. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, we have time to do it for next Tuesday morning. Tuesday's going to be busy. She's going to be. Yeah, the there's bowling. only two of us. Oh, okay. It, is it, it, can we oh, recess? I can't. It's Tuesday anyway. So we recess this meeting for uh, Monday, Monday or Wednesday, or what, well, how would we do that? Yeah, you Okay. Um, are you available Monday or Wednesday? I'm, I'm, I had my phone shut off, okay. so. <laughs> okay, hurry up. Next Monday is the 13th, and we could do a, a 9 a.m. or something. Someone. Uh, it'd be nice. If you're right, though. It'd be nice to discuss an amendment in case we need it. Or draft. Be willing to say what we can do. You know, we can, we understand your concern. God. What we can do is um. Let's see if I can't work something. Bank, email uh, it to you guys. To uh, you, I'll email it to you. Can send Joe. it out to that. You can read it and kind yeah, of chew on it a little bit yeah. to make sure yeah. we cover the bases. Yeah. So, so next Wednesday? Next Wednesday or next Monday? House was owned by someone. Yeah. Yeah. Monday, yeah. Joe, uh, Is that all right with you, Cindy? Deacon. Yeah. Next no. Monday at 9 a.m. Want to do that, you guys? Yeah, do it. He'll come back to me. Oh, nice. So we're going to be so <laughs> glad that they yeah. house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One could still work standing. This was awful rough. Well, probably not. Probably no, not. Or we wouldn't recognize it anyway. Hmm. I'd like them to know the name. Yeah. If you could think of it. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll look it up. Now, how about the old house where Morris Martin. Sorry, it's always going to come back. Oh, you mean on the other corner? Yeah. yeah. Hibbert. Okay, so um, I'll make a motion no, no, we're, we're right now that we recess the meeting oh, yeah. until Monday morning on June 15th at 9 a.m. Before Morris? Yeah. All in favor? For you. We're all good. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. Who, who was that? <laughs>